Hello, hello. Welcome to Rise Above with Tammy Lynn. I'm Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting that good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. Family, I'm here with the roar of Restore for Kingdom Marriages and Families. I'm here with the roar for the prodigals. The Lion of Judah is roaring Restore over you, your marriage, and your family. He is roaring Restore over that one that you've been praying for, that you've been interceding for and he wants you to know that he is bringing them back to him he is restoring them back to him and that he is restoring them back to you sending them back to you putting them in the place that he had called them to be all along in your marriage and in your family glory hallelujah i'm here to um, deliver an encouraging word for the lord to you all um, as he is showing me the process that many prodigals are in right now glory hallelujah this is some really good news i have been feeling an acceleration within my spirit i have been just sensing movements within my spirit i have continued to hear the sound of prodigals returning back to the father and then returning back to their homes back to their place in their marriages and in their families i'm so excited about this great movement that we are in because the Lord continues to give me the words massive conversions. I'm here to tell you that it is harvest season. It is due season. So for those of you who you have stood in the gap interceding for this one who has uh, gone astray from the Lord, this one who just like lost their mind and they have just been out there living in nonsense, this one that you've been praying for, I'm here to tell you it is due season for you to see the fulfillment of that promise that the Lord made you come in to fruition. Glory, hallelujah. Because you have stood in the gap and you have stood selflessly. You have genuinely just prayed for the Lord to bring this one back to him, restoring them back to him. Because you have prayed the will of the Father. He says his will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory, hallelujah. And again, it is due season. It is harvest season. Hallelujah. Family, before I go any further delivering this encouraging word for the Lord, let us pray. Father God, we just come before you and we lift up your holy name. We magnify your holy name and we thank you, Father God, that you are in our midst. We thank you that you are moving mightily and hastily, Father God, to bring about, Father God, what you have promised your people. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you that they are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I thank you that I am covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and no weapon formed against me or my home shall prosper either. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that when I open my mouth that you will fill my mouth with thy words and you will cause thy words to fall upon the ears of those who you want to hear this message. Now, Holy Spirit, speak. Father God, be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So I am reading out of Luke 15, 17 through 20, and this is out of the Passions Translation, because I am sensing um, great humility coming upon many prodigals in this very hour. And out of the Passion Translation, it speaks of humility. It speaks of this prodigal son coming to a place of humili humility, humility, and he felt humiliated. He felt humiliated by the choices that he had made. And I believe very strongly that many prodigals are in this place right now. They are very humiliated by the decisions they've made. They're very humiliated by what they have uh, caused and allowed to happen within their marriages and within their families. They're feeling very humiliated among um Others who are around them, who know of their story, and who has been seeing them live this life that has not been for Christ. They're humiliated. So let's go read Luke 15, beginning in verse 17. Humiliated, the son finally realized what he was doing. Glory, hallelujah. I'm telling you, so many of you, you have just waited for a very long time. Your faith.
faith has been tested and the enemy has tried to sift you like wheat. He has attacked you time and time again, trying to get your hope, your faith, and your confidence. But regardless of how difficult it has been and how long the wait has been, you have kept the faith. And Matthew 9, 29 says, according to your faith, it shall be done. And I'm here to tell you, they are coming to this final moment. Okay, it's the final rut. They are finally arriving at this moment that you've been praying for them to arrive to. And many of you, you have been praying specifically for um, Father God to, to humble them. He is speaking directly to you right now to tell you he is humbling them. He is breaking down uh, that pride that they have been living in. He is delivering them from the spirit of pride. This pride that has kept them on the run. But their run, running days is coming to an end. Glory, hallelujah. So humiliated, the son finally realized what he was doing. And he thought, there are many workers at my father's house who have all the food they want with plenty to spare. They lack nothing. Why am I here dying of hunger, feeding these pigs and eating their slop? I'm telling you, I am just sensing, again, so many prodigals in this process now of finally coming to their senses of finally arriving at this point of asking themselves, what have I done? Why did I run from my marriage? Why did I abandon my marriage? Why did I abandon my husband? Why did I abandon my wife? Why did I abandon my children? Why did I abandon my covenant that I've made with God? Why have I done this? What was I thinking? thinking what was I thinking running from my mother thinking I was better off over there on my own what was I thinking running from my father thinking I was better off over there on my own oh my goodness verse 18 I want to go back home to my father's house the Lord wants you to know that they want to they want want to come home so when this moment happens and you see this do not second guess what is happening do not allow the enemy to get you into this place rather than rejoicing over the blessing rejoicing over this return and beginning to wonder what well, are they going to do it again are they just using me do they just want something from me you know, are they just trying to gain something, you know, from me? You know, what is it? What is in this? You know, is this the game? The Lord, Lord wants you to know that they want to. So when this moment happens and they arrive back with you, just know that they want to. Just know that the Lord has dealt with their heart. Just know that they had came to this final rut moment where they came to their senses and they realized that what they did was wrong. Glory, hallelujah. And I'll say to him, Father, I was wrong. I have sinned against you. I'll never again be worthy to be called your son. Please, Father, treat me like one of your employees. Verse 20, so the young man the young son set off for home. Glory, hallelujah. Again, family, these ones that I am sensing strong within my spirit that are in this, see, th there's a process going on. There's a process of that promise that the Lord made you coming into fulfillment. The ones that you have been praying for, they are in a process of feeling and becoming humiliated. They are in a process of humility. And they are wanting now to return. They are wanting now to return back to God. To be back in his perfect will for their lives. And they are wanting to return to their home. Their home that they abandoned. Whether that is with you. Their uh, husband. Their wife parent, aunt, uncle, 
whoever it is, the one that you've been praying for, that they went astray and there has been a halt. There's been a division. There's been strife. There's been a separation or there's been a divorce. There's been something between you and this one that you've been praying for, this one who went astray. Glory, hallelujah. And he is saying, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. See, true repentance brings true remorse. And you're going to know this when they look you in the eye and they tell you that they are sorry. You're going to know. And it's going to be genuine. It's going to be pure humility. Their apology is going to be very sincere. And you're going to know it. And if for some reason you're questioning it, the Lord wants you to know it is sincere and that they want to be there. And it is by his spirit that he has brought them back to where they belong in your life. Glory, hallelujah. He has been saying that for many, many months now. Zechariah 4, 6, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. By his spirit, he's bringing them to this final rut. He's bringing them to humility. He's bringing them to their senses. He's bringing them back to him to uh, live once again in his perfect will for their lives. And he's bringing them back to you. This is a beautiful season for a massive number of prodigals to come home. They are coming back to the Father and they are coming back to you in humility in pureness, in genuineness, with a sincere apology. And I'm telling you, family, the moment that you have been waiting for to be face to face with them once again is coming because they are in a process of having this face to face with Jesus right now. Glory, hallelujah. Family, continue to stand firm on the word of God. Stay strong in your faith. I will talk to you all soon. Shalom.